In ancient Egypt, thousands of years ago, there was a woman who contributed to shaping an entire dynasty and shook the history of the Pharaonic Empire. That was Queen Tia. She lived from approximately 1398 to 1338 BC, during the late period of the 18th dynasty, when Egypt was at the peak of its power, but was also gradually moving toward one of the greatest religious and political crises in ancient history. As the great royal wife of Pharaoh Amenhotep III, the mother of Pharaoh Akhenaten, and the grandmother of Tutankhamun, Ta was not only a royal figure, but also the center of political, religious, and diplomatic power for nearly half a century. Unlike many previous queens who came from secondary branches of the royal family, Ta came from a noble family, but did not possess direct royal blood. Her father, Yuya, was a high-ranking official in the court of Amenhotep III, possibly serving as a chariot commander or a military advisor, while her mother, Thuya, was a figure of great prestige in religious and royal ceremonies. The tombs of Yuya and Thuya, discovered nearly intact in the early 20th century, revealed the level of wealth, status, and how close this family was to the throne. It was this very background that allowed T.A. to enter the court not as a mere political tool, but as a figure with her own power network, something rarely seen in the patriarchal system of ancient Egypt. The marriage between T.A. and Amenhotep III was established when she was very young, likely between 12 and 14 years old, while the king was also not yet fully mature. However, right from the early years of his reign, T.A. was named the Great Royal Wife, a title reserved only for the official wife who held the right to bear the legitimate heir to the throne. From that point on, images of Tiye appeared side by side with Amenhotep III in temples, reliefs, and monuments with a rare level of equality. In many statues, she was depicted as being equal in size to the king, breaking a long-standing tradition where the pharaoh was always portrayed larger than everyone else to emphasize their absolute power. The fact that T.A.'s name was placed inside a cartouche, an honor usually reserved only for pharaohs, shows that she was not just a queen, but an independent political entity within the power structure. During the reign of Amenhotep III, Egypt reached an unprecedented level of prosperity and stability. The empire stretched from Nubia in the south to the Levant in the east, maintaining a complex diplomatic system through marriages and gift exchanges with major powers like Mitanni, Babylon, and Hatti. Within this context, T.A. acted as an informal center of diplomacy. The Amarna Letters, a collection of diplomatic correspondence between the Egyptian court and its allies or vassal states, revealed that foreign kings wrote directly to T.A. They addressed her as sister or mother in diplomatic terms, seeking her advice or voicing complaints about political matters. This reflects her level of prestige in the international order of that time, which went far beyond the usual role of a queen. At the Malkata Palace on the west bank of Thebes, Amenhotep III built a massive palace complex dedicated to T.A., serving not only as a symbol of affection, but also as a center of power. It was right here that T.A. and her husband raised their six children, including two sons, Tutmose and Amenhotep IV. When Thutmose died young, Amenhotep IV became the heir, and T.A. transitioned her role from great royal wife to queen mother a position that carried even greater influence in the Egyptian court. When Amenhotep IV took the throne and later changed his name to Akhenaten, Egypt entered an unprecedented religious revolution. Akhenaten abandoned the traditional system of worshiping many gods, closed the temples of the god Amun, and raised Aten, the symbol of the sun disk, to the supreme position. This reform wasn't just a change in theology, it was a political movement to weaken the power of the Amun priesthood, who had become just as wealthy and influential as the royals over the past century. Within this context, Tia is believed to have supported her son, not necessarily because of a religious faith in Aten, but because she clearly understood that concentrating religious power on the throne would solidify the dynasty's position against any competing forces. Images and texts from the Amarna period show that T.A. continued to appear in ceremonies, receive envoys, and participate in political life, even as Nefertiti, Akhenaten's wife, gradually became the main symbol of the new dynasty. T.A.'s continuous presence in the new court shows that she was a bridge between the old order and the new, serving as a link between traditional Egypt and Akhenaten's bold religious experiment. T.A. passed away around 1338 BC, during the reign of Akhenaten, 
Her death marked the loss of a political and spiritual pillar for the dynasty. However, the fate of her remains later became one of the greatest mysteries in Egyptology. For centuries, T.A.'s original burial place was not clearly identified. Some evidence suggests that she might have been buried in Amarna, Akhenaten's new capital, before her remains were moved when the city was abandoned after his death. A major turning point came in 1898, when archaeologist Victor Loret discovered a side chamber in the tomb KV-35 of Amenhotep II in the Valley of the Kings. It contained several royal mummies that had been reburied in a later period to protect them from looters. Among these was an older female mummy referred to as the Elder Lady alongside a younger woman and a teenage boy. For decades, the identity of the Elder Lady was a subject of debate until ancient DNA technology was applied in the early 21st century. DNA analysis was carried out on this mummy and compared with the DNA of Yuya and Thuya who had been identified with certainty thanks to their tombs as well as with a lock of hair labeled with T.A.'s name found in Tutankhamun's tomb. The results showed a clear genetic match, confirming that the elder lady was indeed Queen T.A. This discovery not only solved a mystery that had lasted for over a century, but also provided a solid genetic foundation for reconstructing the genealogy of the 18th dynasty. Modern DNA research has firmly established Queen T.A.'s place in the Egyptian royal family tree. Genetic analysis of the mummies in tomb KV-35, now identified as T.A., shows a direct mother-son relationship with the mummy in KV-55, who is widely accepted as Akhenaten. Because of this, the data also confirms that Tutankhamun is T.A.'s grandson. The lineage from Amenhotep III to Akhenaten to Tutankhamun was controversial for decades because of a lack of physical evidence, but it is now backed up by biological data, not just old texts or historical guesswork, more importantly, these analyses also shed light on the unique genetic structure of the Egyptian royalty during the Amarna period. Tutankhamun's genome shows long stretches of identical DNA, a clear sign that his parents were very closely related, most likely full siblings. This matches historical evidence showing that Akhenaten maintained the tradition of marrying within the family to keep power and the sacredness of the royal bloodline strictly within the family circle. In that context, T.A. was not just a historical figure, but also the biological starting point for this entire chain of consequences. As Tutankhamun's grandmother, she stood at the head of a genetic line that was closed off by inbreeding. Thanks to DNA data, researchers today can clearly see how the royal family's political and religious decisions, especially the protection of the divine bloodline, left a long-lasting mark on the health and fate of their successors. Besides that, Queen T's genetic background is also a major topic of debate. The arguments over her race stem from the question of which genetic group she actually belonged to in ancient Egypt. Some scholars believe she might have had Nubian ancestry, based on how she was portrayed in art, her unique facial features, and the fact that her family didn't come from the traditional royal line of Thebes. On the other hand, many researchers point out that her parents, Yuya and Thuya, were local nobles who held high positions in both religion and government. This makes the theory of her being an outsider much less convincing. The lack of clear family records, combined with the way her remains were moved around, makes it a mystery that simply can't be solved by looking at history alone. DNA data from T.A.'s remains gives us a much more objective scientific picture. It shows that she belonged to a New Kingdom Egyptian population that was a real mix of Nubian, Levantine, and Mediterranean influences. So, rather than belonging to one fixed race, the genetic data reveals she was part of an Egyptian population with a high level of mixing and interregional connections. And it's exactly this characteristic that is the root cause of why her biological roots are still so debated today. Looking back at Queen T.A.'s whole story, from her noble roots and her roles as queen and queen mother, to having her identity confirmed by DNA after 3,000 years, we see a rare example of how modern science can bring historical figures back to life. T.A. is no longer just a name carved in stone or a mummy in a lab. She was a historical force that helped shape one of the most volatile periods in ancient Egypt. Through this blend of archaeology, history, and genetics, her image is becoming much clearer, giving us a deeper understanding of power, family, and the biological limits that decided the fate of an entire dynasty.